All right, so today we are talking about the Transition Relay. Transition says this is the mountain biker's e-bike. This bike is a really cool e-bike in that it's modular. I am here in Park City today, which is famously anti-e-bike, but I'm gonna take the battery out, see if they'll let me on the lifts and go pedal this as a regular bike. Let's see if the Transition Relay is the right bike for you. All right, mission accomplished. We got on the lift, did a whole bunch of laps, got a good feel for how the bike pedals as a pedal bike. So let's go back to the garage and talk about the relay. All right, so I didn't know whether to put the transition relay on the e-bike channel or this one. And that's because the bike is a bit of a chameleon. It can be an e-bike and it can be not an e-bike. It adapts to different riders, terrains, writer groups, friend groups, uh, local e-bike regulations. And, and if that sentence didn't pique your interest, you might want to see a doctor. So stick around to see how the relay does it. So with the battery installed, the relay comes in at 44 and a half pounds. So really not too bad for a long travel e-bike, 39 and a half pounds without the battery. I would also place this bike squarely in the middle of the aggressive all mountain or light enduro categories, you know, especially depending on the build that you get. And it does come in two flavors. Here we have the regular, just 160 mil travel version, but it does come in a 170, 170, and that's called the PNW version. The PNW also has a smaller 27 and a half inch rear wheel, while the normal edition has two 29 inch wheels. The frames are identical between the PNW version and the regular version. It's the flip chip here and a different stroke length shock that will get you that extra 10 millimeters of rear travel. Head tube angle here is 64 degrees for this regular version. The reach is actually really long. We got a 510 millimeter reach on my size extra large. And you pair that with the size specific chain stays on my XL, those are 440. 48 millimeters brings your overall wheelbase to 1309 millimeters. That is a long bike. So both versions of the relay use the same Fazua Ride 60 drive system and they both have a 430 watt hour battery. This drive system has three power modes. You've got breeze, river, and rocket. And then you've got a short duration ultra boost mode that you know, will last up to 10, 12 seconds. You pop this little guy up here and you've got a USB-C port so you can charge a phone or power accessories like lights. The entire system here is controlled through this, the little ring controller. But there is a bit of a problem here. And so far, this is the only problem I've encountered with Fazua. The ring controller tends to get stuck. So you're moving it this way and it stays that way. It won't come back to its neutral position. From what I understand, this is a somewhat common occurrence for users and there is a warranty fix in place. Now, I guess I do have one other knit to pick. You have to take the battery out of the bike to charge it. And I, I do like that that makes the bike ultra sleek. You know, it's there's no ports here. There's no anything that would indicate that this is an e-bike. It is very sleek and sexy and cool, but having to remove your battery to charge it is a bit of a pain. I'm a little bit more worried about the mechanism here that holds the battery in place, wearing out, getting looser, uh, and that battery starting to rattle and make some noise. Those fears could be totally unfounded, but it is something to think about. All right, so now let's talk about maybe the coolest thing about the Relay and the Fazua drive system is that you are able to remove the battery without any tools. The door that holds it tool-free, the battery itself is tool-free. So you can pedal this bike like a pedal bike, albeit a bit of a portly one. One of the best things I noticed about pedaling it without the battery installed is there is really no noticeable drag from the motor. So it actually pedals pretty okay. And the only thing you're overcoming is the extra weight of the bike. But we will talk about how it climbs uh, later and by later I mean right now. All right, so talking about the relay on the climbs, uh, we're gonna start in e-bike mode and then we'll move into pedal mode. My daily driver e-bike for reference is an Orbea Wild, which is big, full power, very fast. It's got that Bosch race motor in it. So the difference between these two is pretty night and day. That said, I am very pleased with the Fazua Ride 60 system. It's dead quiet, offers enough power to still feel like an e-bike and the battery life is some of the best I've ever seen. And not to mention the relay itself is a comfortable and competent climber, you know, regardless of the 
drive system. So let's start with the suspension design on this bike. The relay feels very transition when it comes to suspension feel. It's more on the active side of the spectrum, providing a lot of comfort and control and traction. I experimented with a lot of different sag levels here from a little bit less than 30% all the way up to about 34, 35%. Transition recommends a range between 28 to 34%, which that's a very big range. So depending on your preference, you can get this bike to feel exactly how you want it. My preference ended up on the higher sag amount. It performed a lot better on the downhill at those sag measurements. The motor overcomes the slight efficiency penalty that you're paying by running more sag. Plus the traction benefits are really nice, especially on an e-bike. I've always been a big proponent of more active feeling e-bikes because all the power in the world from that motor does you no good if the back wheel can't drive you forward. So the relay's geometry is comfortable and it feels relatively neutral. I didn't feel like I was stretching out to the bars despite having a 510 millimeter reach. That steep seat tube is doing a lot of the work here, putting you closer to the bars. And that steep seat tube is actually really important when you're running those higher sag numbers so you're not just falling off of the back of the bike. I'm a tall guy riding bigger frames, so I do appreciate the longer chain stays. Uh, it's nice to see Transition make these size specific for folks of all different sizes. I did find myself swinging a bit wide on some of the tighter corners though because the bike's overall wheelbase is pretty long no matter how you look at it. That will always give you a bit of grief on tight switchbacks, but I'd argue on a bike like this, you know, that's this aggressive, it's really not out of place or, or too extreme. So now let's talk about the drive system performance on the climbs. The Fazua Ride 60 performed admirably during my full boost until the battery dies test. Um, I like running e-bikes on their highest power modes and just doing my best to kill the battery. However, I ran into issues draining the battery on this bike because I couldn't. So my, my personal battery drained before I could get the bike to die. Uh, and on my first test ride, I actually I did a five and a half mile climb with 1800 vertical and I barely lost the second battery light when I got to the top. So I still had 60% battery after that. And, and keep in mind, that's full boost the entire time. Never even thought about the other modes and I weigh about 190 pounds. So that's, you know, a pretty decent test. Uh, the Fazua system is also dead quiet on the climbs. It's actually one of the quietest e-bikes I've ridden. Now let's talk about some things I've never talked about before and that's pedaling an e-bike with the battery off. So this is uncharted territory for me and I would assume it's uncharted territory for many people. So after removing the battery, is the relay just like your pedal bike? Uh, no, not unless your pedal bike weighs 40 pounds. And, and now that I think about it, I had a Norco range that weighed 39 and a half pounds out of the box. So maybe it is like a pedal bike. Is the relay a viable option though for pedal rides here and there? I, I think so. It wouldn't be my first choice obviously for long rides, but if you're doing mainly shuttles, mainly lift stuff, and then you're gonna pedal around from there, I do think it's a really viable option. And then maybe if you just wanted to go do a shorter ride, shorter climb, it would be just fine. I, I'm not gonna try to do 3000 vert or any sort of giant missions on this bike but short rides would be just fine. If you're trying to hang with pedal riders on normal pedal bikes and you're on the relay with no battery, you're gonna have a hell of a time. So overall, the relay is a really good climber, really comfortable, capable, provides a ton of traction. And the Fazua Ride 60 uh, actually does very well, much, much better than I had anticipated. So now let's talk about the relay on the descents. And, and just like on the climbs, the relay is a versatile descender. It offers a wide variety of build kits, which also in turn offers a wide variety of uh, usable terrain, rider groups, rider styles. Uh, it's a very versatile descender. As expected, it is burly and capable and it doesn't sacrifice too much of that transition fun factor. So starting with the suspension feel again, the relay doesn't feel like many other e-bikes I've ridden. Most e-bikes have an ultra plush, deep and gooey feel from the added weight of the bike. Instead, the relay does feel like a pedal bike with a, a more firm and supportive suspension platform. So even at the higher sag amounts, it doesn't sit too deep into the stroke and wallow, and it, it provides a good platform for cornering and pumping and jumping. There is a lot of progression built into the bike, so excessive bottom outs weren't an issue even with me running 34% sag. In fact, one of the biggest reasons I ended up at that high of a sag measurement is because at 30%, I was struggling to use all of the travel. So with a bit less air in the shock, I could use full travel, and I didn't have any of those negative effects. So the relay is slack and long, and it's unsurprising that it's very stable at speed and in the rough. Uh, one of my test trails is 
kind of flat out high speed, chattery, double, single track. And I have never felt stability quite like that before. So the, the chatter was definitely still there. You still feel the trail through the bike. It's not ultra plush, but the, the geometry ensured nothing felt squirrely or sketchy. And those size specific chainstays certainly added to that stability. Those longer chainstays from my height added to that stability. The bike's length did become a bit more apparent on switchbacks and tighter corners. And I had a more difficult time maintaining speed on flatter flow trails. And I think a lot of it came down to having to slow down so much for the corners because the bike is a little bit longer. I definitely preferred the bike on the rougher, steeper, and more natural trails versus manicured flow trails. So I, I, I go back and forth on how the relay does with being playful and jumpy. I think the bike sometimes tricks you into thinking it's not an e-bike, and maybe that's what's clouding my judgment here. Uh, when I try to compare it to non-e-bikes, it does feel heavier and clunkier in the air, but when you compare it to e-bikes, and if you can tell yourself it's an e-bike, it actually jumps very well. I'd put it very close to your Bay Rise in that regard. And I think the supportive suspension platform helps quite a bit when it comes to getting the wheels off the ground. It doesn't just mush in and use all of its travel. So while the motor is very quiet on the climbs, it's a bit of a different story on the descents. There is a distinct rattle here, and I imagine it, it probably comes from wiring and cable routing issues rather than the motor itself. Uh, so it could potentially be fixed. Let's answer this big question. Can the relay be your only bike? So the answer to this question is going to come down to your riding style, your preferred trails, who you ride bikes with, and e-bike legality in your area. If you're looking for an e-bike for most of your rides, but from time to time you'll need a pedal bike or a shuttle bike, the relay could actually work really well. Keep in mind it's not going to be a quick climbing pedal bike, and it's better suited for short climbs and shuttles and lifts. So if you're hoping to split time evenly between pedal bike and e-bike modes, I don't know if that's going to be what you're after. Your money might be better spent on a dedicated e-bike and pedal bike at that point. So who is the transition relay for? I think it's a really good option for two different rider groups. The first is the aggressive descenders who aren't willing to put up with a cumbersome full weight e-bike. The relay is one of the few mid-weight yet aggressive geometry and long travel e-bikes on the market. Most of the other lightweight EMTBs are a bit more trail with a little bit less travel. The relay definitely skews towards the aggressive side, especially that PNW edition. And those handling benefits from the lighter weight platform are definitely still noticeable out on the trail though. Uh, it's easier to maneuver, easier to get airborne and pump and jump and goof around and have fun. The other group of riders who I think will like it are the people who just simply can't have two bikes and they want an e-bike. So it might not be as good as having both bikes in your arsenal, uh, an e-bike and a pedal bike, but it's infinitely better than only having one or the other. It does double duty, whereas other e-bikes don't really have that ability, or at least they're not designed around removing the battery and pedaling as a pedal bike. So bottom line on the transition relay, with a tool-free removable battery, a viable pedal bike mode, uh, multiple build options, including different wheel sizes and different travel amounts, the relay might be the most versatile e-bike on the market. So that's gonna wrap it up for the transition relay. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next time.